My name is Pat CC, and for the next seven nights in a row, I will be going to the most expensive concert near me and ranking them in a tier list. And tonight we're starting with the one, the only, Drizzy Drake. Whoever guesses this right wins $100. What song will Drake open with? Champagne Poetry? Worst Behavior. My guess is Know Yourself. Know Yourself. I was running through this. If we're all incorrect, you guys both owe me $100, so great. Whenever I'm in Dallas, I gotta stop at Bucky's. Get some water, gummy bears, just the essentials. This concert cost me $3,308.84 for just three tickets. The cheapest ones available were $455 in the nosebleeds, but nobody wants to sit all the way up there. If I'm gonna spend this money, I want a good experience. Drake had a pretty sweet entrance, I must say. He actually opened with the song, Look What You've Done. So that means you both owe me $100. <laughs> he also came on before 21 Savage, which I didn't expect. Then he continued with like eight more down-tempo moody tracks. And his singing from the beginning was a little rough, but I must say when he performed Jungle, I was pretty impressed. I was like, this sounds like just good singing. Sounded just like the record. Then he went absolutely crazy. So many bangers back to back. And then had just like a random monologue about life. Who doesn't do that monologue at their show? Right. I can't believe people choose to spend their hard earned money. Like, dude, shut up and sing the song. <laughs> but one thing that we can all agree that he was doing that was so weird is he was just, he was taking rap songs and singing them or he would just totally be way off time. <laughs> Like in particular with Jimmy Cooks, I remember, by the time you would actually be singing the next line, he'd still be on the line before that. In particular, he did this DJ session for like 10 minutes in the middle of the set where he took some of his more dancey tracks and turned them into like club like really true EDM style dance tracks but he was just moaning over them like passion fruit played it was a different beat it was a different vibe but he was just <laughs> like drinking tequila yeah. as soon as he was like bro I'm taking a tequila shot I'm like all right this concert's over you know what they say Fridays are good for drinking tequila where I'm from can I do a shot with y'all in Dallas Texas tonight I'm trying to get turned up like to the best times in my life and we still got more times to go together. I promise you. Real talk, you've been my inspiration. You know me plus you, combination for the nation. One more thing. Why did he have sperm flying through the air, bro? Could you imagine the conversation with management? He's like, look, I got a great idea. All right, you know, like nut. <laughs> But yeah, I think about the entire experience. I mean, the crowd was awesome. And the light show was phenomenal. The stage was really cool. When I think about $3,000 though, it really starts to put a damper on it. And his singing being so poor and him just taking some of my favorite Drake songs and just ruining them by moaning off time is insane. Particularly Legend. Bro just butchered that. Like, Drake, <laughs> stop drinking. I'll say C tier. All right, we're going to see the monkeys.
But first, we had to stop at the iconic Terry Black's barbecue. We got the brisket, the turkey, the mac and cheese, and all the sides. Then we noticed someone's father scrolling literal corn in the middle of the packed out restaurant on his massive iPad, full brightness, no privacy screen. Do you have no shame, sir? Oh, you think I'm lying? Ask the 150,000 people that viewed it on Twitter. gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, that was insane. Time for a really long car ride home. What are the chances that you are awake for this whole car ride? Absolutely zero. <laughs> Then we embarked on our three hour journey from Dallas back home to Oklahoma City. And yeah, Riley slept the entire time. The tickets were $654.45. In my opinion, just a little bit overpriced, but understandable, I mean, come on. It's the biggest band in the world. But uh, wow, what a show. The venue was amazing, it was clean, it was brand new, built in like 2014. Literally every single person there was wearing black. The Arctic Monkeys paced their set really well. There was never a moment where I felt too slow and like maybe a little bit boring. And it definitely never got like too energetic for too long of a period of time where you know you felt like you couldn't keep up or maybe it was too loud and chaotic perfectly balanced they also had this crazy vortex situation going on on the screen where like the cameraman is picking up the guitarist and then it's also picking up the screen on the stage which is then picking up the guitarist again and it's just a never-ending loop sick Okay. Also, I don't think you can tell from this footage, but this concert was being filmed with like a camera that looked like it was from the 80s. So on screen, it looked like a concert from the 80s, but I was experiencing it in real life. It was trippy, but awesome. And Alex Turner literally sounds better live. I'm not exaggerating. That's not a meme. On the record, his vocals sound compressed and not living up to their full potential. Even the high notes, particularly on the song Snap Out of It, high notes were perfect. I gotta tell you. I was very, very impressed. Do I want to know it was as magical as you could imagine? Also, the body paint outro was really sick. They had a crazy solo at the end. They did the pump fake where like they go off the stage and everybody's like, we're not leaving, motherfucker. You come back out on the stage and play more fucking songs, you pieces of sh And they did. They did. They came out and played like three more songs. And the best part about it, no monologues. No talking to the crowd, just 100% playing the music and letting the music speak for itself for the entire time. Fort Worth. It was one of the best concerts I've ever been to, S tier. So we were looking through some local Oklahoma City shows, and I noticed that an artist by the name of Jay Plaza is performing tonight at the Tower Theater. We looked him up on Instagram and noticed that he actually follows me. Check my DM history. He actually DM'd me in 2020. So I DM'd him tonight and I said, yo bro, I seen you follow me and you have a show in OKC tonight. I'ma pop out. And he said, yeah bro, let's go. I guess we're going to see Jay Plaza. Wasn't expecting this. Jay Plaza just messaged me and said that he could get me into the show for free. So I guess this concert's costing zero dollars. And unexpectedly, he introduced me to C. Dot Castro backstage. What's up, bro? That's the rock you've seen all your Really? Yeah. Want to know a crazy ass story? Oh. Seen you a long time ago. For real? 11 years ago, I saw Logic at the North Star Bar in Philadelphia. There was 280 people there, and C. Dot Castro was his opener. I saw Castro perform for more people while opening for Prof than I did while he opened for Logic in 2012. Speaking of Prof, he was the headliner on the tour that Jay Plaza was on. I never heard of him, but he had that place packed out. Anyways, I got to sit on the stage for Castro and Plaza's performance. <laughs> It's always great to see smaller artists working their ass off to try to impress the crowd. I respect the grind. I can never do that myself. I'm a nigga with attitude. I stick to my roots. Naughty by nature. Bring the ruckus like I'm chilling with Wu. I'm on a quest with my tribe to get to the far side, but they treat us like outcasts looking at Chris Cross side. The concert was solid. I had a fun time. B tier. It's day four, Monday night, and there's not much going on. So we're at the Tower Theater again, and we're going to see Broken Social Scene.
They're kind of like an indie rock jam band formed in Toronto. They have tons of different instrument players on stage. Tickets were $55 and no disrespect, but it was very boring and not for me. They were very talented, but D tier. And for concert number five, Jelly Roll. I wore my Carhartt hoodie and uh, I'm pretty excited. I've never heard a Jelly Roll song, but I like his face tattoos. I also really like Jelly Donuts. So honestly, the combination just can't miss. Yeah. These tickets cost a very modest $247.49. Objectively better than Drake. Oh yeah, dude, he was like an amazing singer. <sighs> what a show. I wasn't lying when I said it was objectively better than Drake. Honestly, country music makes me emotional. And I know what you're thinking, shut up, pussy. And you know what? I'll accept that. But it makes me emotional because it reminds me of my girlfriend. And I know what you're thinking, shut up, pussy. I get it. But it's just the truth. Plus, seeing a grown man cry because it was the first time he sold out an NBA stadium. This is my first number one on country radio in Oklahoma City almost brought another man to tears. The guy next to us was crying. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so obesity was in the house tonight. <laughs> okay, listen, listen, I know that was mean. Now it's all good because Oklahoma is known for their obesity. But hey, they popped out. Who am I kidding? I'm no better than them, all right? I got me some dipping Dots, all right? I was chowing down like the fatty that I am and I loved it. I'm no better than those people. Also, country music concerts, everybody's just chilling. Barely any people are recording with their phones. But we do gotta talk about people recording instead of living in the moment. Like there was this guy that walked all the way down from the top and just zoomed in and was just looking at his phone like this to record his favorite song. And you gotta wonder like, did they even really experience it? To think people are spending all that money on tickets just to record the experience and not actually live in the moment makes me sad. And speaking of of tickets, Jelly Roll actually mentioned the crazy fee that Ticketmaster puts on there. He said something like, I want to thank you for paying that ridiculous fee they put on these tickets. That fee is criminal. It's fucking wrong. We're going to have to talk about that later. What a performance. I went in there so ignorant, I didn't even realize that he had the number one song on country radio for the past five weeks. And also, I think he said number one on rock radio as well. He also had some objectively good merchandise. He even gave a shout out to Big Pharma. Fuck Big Pharma. It was a great show. I mean, there was a section where he performed a bunch of 90s and early 2000s rap songs, and I, I almost died of cringe a little bit, all right? I mean, he has good taste, but let me tell you, though, the whites were excited when Lose Yourself came on. <laughs> I was more excited for Miss Jackson. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Comparing that to the Drake show, I don't know, something about Drake's like monologue speaking to the crowd felt less personal. I believe in energy exchange, I believe in frequency. That's what we've been doing all night. But Jelly Roll's really felt personal. I'm gonna say this from the bottom of my heart and listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. I could never thank you enough. You took the most uneducated, average, white trash, fat ass motherfucker in America, and you made him a fucking nationwide star, baby! A tier. So tonight we're going to see an indie sleaze band. So you know what that means. Do, do you know what that means? Because I have no idea. Luckily, we have John. Hey, my name's John. The band is called Model Actress and Pitchfork called them indie sleaze, but other genres to describe them are noise rock, dance punk, post punk. Let's be honest, genres don't matter. The tickets were $20 and maybe 40 people showed up and the music was definitely loud. John just dragged me through the seventh layer of hell with that. That was good. Concert. What'd you think? You like it? I've never been to anything quite like that. that was, it was good. I knew that they were a good stage presence, I just didn't know they were gonna be that good. The lead singer stalked me down from the stage and got on his knees to sing to me, so, uh, yeah. 
The performer, in my opinion, carried. I feel like the guitars, like the bass guitar and the electric guitar, were like literally just to make it sound as sinister as possible. Like the whole thing yeah. felt yeah. like it was scoring yeah. a horror it's film. So cool. And it's I so get cool. scared easily, so like, I don't know, it wasn't the best combo. <laughs> I'm saying fucking A. That kills fucking Drake. <laughs> we don't need inflatables. It took me a bit to process what I just witnessed, but it was nice for me to get outside my comfort zone, and I honestly enjoyed the experience. John said A tier, I would give it a C tier, so let's call it B tier. Now it's day seven, our last concert, and we had to save the best for last. And by best, I mean worst. Tonight, we are seeing Nickelback aka the most hated band of all time. Now, a lot of people don't really understand why Nickelback is so hated, and the reason is actually way more simple than you think. It just sort of became a meme to make fun of Nickelback because they were so popular and so good in the early 2000s. So they're not actually the most hated, I guess. But the moment they play Photograph, we're leaving. <laughs> Tickets cost us $241.69. A little overpriced, but we were on the floor, so it's understandable. That puts our seven day total at $4,547.47. The ticket fees alone were $689.84. Plus when you add hotel, gas, and food, we are well over $5,000 for this seven day adventure. All right, all jokes aside, this thing was a train wreck from the very beginning. First of all, their intro was completely botched because I guess there was some technical issue with the drummer. So the lead singer just comes out and he's like, Tulsa, are you ready to rock? And then they don't rock. And he's like, oh, well, that was anticlimactic. That is the truest definition of anticlimactic. Like, bro had absolutely no plan to maybe get out of the awkward situation. Like, maybe chat with the crowd. Maybe do a little monologue like Drake would. <laughs> I think it's important with this platform that I've been given to say things that I feel are important for people to hear. But instead he's like, Let's pretend like that never fucking happened. Freestyle a little bit. You've been performing for 25 years. Also, their visuals were so cringe. <laughs> they just had this van that was running from the cops. What was that supposed to be, you guys? And then they were just put the neck of a guitar as their background. Dude, sick visual. <laughs> How'd you come up with that? Maybe if we put guitars on the big screen, people will think that we really can rip the guitar, baby. <laughs> In my opinion, a visual is supposed to maybe tell a story or at least have some sort of artistic direction, but I feel like Nickelback's artistic direction as a band is that they are a rock band. And all of their songs are about being a rock band. It's like a lyrical rapper who only raps about being the most talented rapper. It's like, okay, but what are you making songs about? Nickelback is just, we're a fucking rock band, baby. And that's what we do. We rock. Look at all this fire. Dude, they had more fire than Travis Scott, all right? Relax, dude. Dude, muscle cars, fire, rock and roll, baby. <laughs> it's like what a teenager depicts a rock star's lifestyle is. Their transitions between each song provided zero value. Burnt the shit out of my thumb last night. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is hideous. Like, just, just play the song. And on top of that, the singing was just bad. And their live performance was not that impressive. Not great guitar playing, not really great drumming, not great visuals, not great singing. From a musical standpoint, it was very forgetful. <laughs> the one transition though that was pretty memorable was... If we release this today, we would be canceled by tomorrow. Then again, they 
Nickelback. Nobody has been trying to cancel you. They've been making fun of you. He's like, imagine if we played this song on the radio today, we would be canceled. And the first lyric was like, Hey dude, have you ever heard any rap song ever? My booty hole brown. I don't think they know what canceled means, but easily the best part of the show. Look at this graph. I didn't think it was gonna come out of his mouth, but because it did, that saved them from getting F tier. Nickelback, D tier. Just kidding, F tier. No, I was smoking crack 